everybody, welcome to No Excuses. And my very special guest today is Deborah Renard. How are you, dear? Hi, I'm good, thank you. So How nice you? seeing you. Thank Deborah, you. you have such a wonderful, talented person with acting, singing. I heard you sing before, and your voice is just amazing. Thank you. And where did this all begin? Was it singing? Was it your acting? Yeah, you also it, produce movies. Yeah, and I also do you, write. Do you, do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into nutrition and wellness. Forget Actually, about... I'm big on nutrition and wellness. I as well. I start the day off with a either a green drink, like spinach, lemon, and fresh okay. ginger, or my newest is uh, carrots, okay. orange juice, um, and fresh ginger and turmeric. Oh my God, amazing. That I mean, sounds you, you drink delicious. that, you feel phenomenal. Good for you. So, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm into wellness as well. Oh, good. However, it's important though to eat. I, uh, absolutely. I, I've read enough about wellness, and we're, we're a little off topic, but this is a That's great topic, right? <laughs> uh, wellness is good too. Exactly. People need to learn. Yeah. And I watch people eat, uh, drink these shakes all day long, and I said, do you realize when you don't chew food, you send different signals to your brain? And it doesn't always absorb what you're drinking. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know yes. that. But I do, but I also do eat. I mean, I, I like a, a raw juice yes. or a smoothie, but then I sure. also will have like a salad, and you know, I do I do just like I've always liked to eat healthy. I just Good for you, you feel so much better. It does. I'm with. I have you. more energy. I just By I'm far. happier. And and people look at me and say, wow, you know, like. You must like. I think they think I must work really hard at it. I'm like, no, it's not. It's not working hard at all. No. In fact, I'm, I'm. I'm actually eating the way I want to right. eat. You know? I as well. I find it so much simpler to make healthy food than to try to concoct not healthy food. Right. 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 Or to eat really unhealthy and then like try to work so hard to counteract right. all the bad things That's that right. are happening to your body because you're eating unhealthy. It's like it's just simpler and easier. To get back to where you felt so light yeah. and smooth yeah, and, yeah. and relaxed and like. Like you said, happy and positive. And I'm a big believer in sleep as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, I've actually been a bit embarrassed that I, I sleep about <laughs> nine hours a night. Nine hours is good. Uh, and again. I've had nutritionists who tell me that's good. And most yes. people, they literally have said to me, you know, most ailments that people have would be cured if they just slept more. Well, I've studied the science of sleep. So, oh, yes, you you're 100% you're right. So, short and sweet, if you're sleeping five hours per night, Within six to seventh day, you are type two diabetic. And wow. also tossing and turning puts inflammation into your body because you never relaxed your muscles. Your muscles need two sleep cycles of zero movement. It's actually called the paralysis state. Oh, wow. And the only thing that's working is your brain, your heart, and your lungs, your muscles are completely paralyzed. However, yeah. if you don't achieve that, you need muscles to move. So you're exerting your muscles and you're adding inflammation into your body, which as you know, being so healthy, is the wrong pH level. Exactly. And that's why you get ill because you deplete your autoimmune system and then viruses take over your body. That's right. And we're 82% water, so your pH needs to be very healthy. That's exactly right. And your right. brain is 90% water. That's exactly right. And that's right. why the term fog brain comes from. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. If you eat a more alkaline um, diet, um, viruses and bacteria can't grow. They cannot. Yeah. They cannot. Yeah. So I don't know how you get nine hours between your right, your sit, your dance. <laughs> I don't know. You serve bar. <laughs> Somehow you just fit it all. You do in. laundry. Yeah, yeah, you do. You work out. You, you do make laundry, coffee. You, have emails, you, cook, you, know, you clean. You, know, you have your life, right? <laughs> so where did it all begin well, for you? Well, I would say for me, it started with a love of singing. Um, and uh, it's funny because you know my singing partner Al mentioned yes. uh, Barbara Streisand, and I grew up just like idolizing her. I How mean, could you not? Oh my God, she was the greatest singer right. of all time. And Fills I just, a room without microphones. I just wanted to be her. You know, <laughs> I did. I watched. Not a bad thing, <laughs> right? And um, but then in high school, I discovered what a musical was. And I was like, wow, this is, this is it. it. It's like everything you want, dancing, singing, acting, all in one medium. It's fantastic. Right. And I remember after I had my first lead in a musical, and it was Sarah Brown and Guys and Dolls, and I went, I was sitting backstage, and everyone had left. The show was over, and it was the last performance, and I just got into this very deep depression that the show was over, and I was like, oh, man, what am I going to do? And it was like those, <laughs> it was like those cartoons, a little flight <laughs> went off and I went, I'll be an actress. <laughs> I, need, I need something else to do. There'll always be another part. 
church. There'll That's always right. be another show. That's right. That's the solution to all my problems. You know, it's hilarious. And you move your shoulders so perfectly <laughs> saying that. <laughs> so then that was the moment I decided. And, you know, I was a junior in high school. I decided I'm going to be an actress. Wonderful. And um, I was lucky that I got into an acting group and... Um, I got agents right away, and wow, you know, look I, at that. I mean, it all kind of snowballed, but it was like, it was a very firm intention that this is exactly what I wanted, and like Al said, I worked very hard, I was always like going to auditions, running from class to class, um, but then I got this series, Dallas, that I was on for, you know, 10 yes. years, and it was the number one show, and that was, you know, fantastic. And that kept you busy. That kept me busy, and the singing kind of fell to the wayside. Um, after after that, I, I, I became a producer um, with my um, husband, who's now my ex-husband, but you know we still work together, you know, producing and developing TV and film. And um, and it wasn't until nine years ago when I separated and I moved from LA to New York. Al and I reconnected. Smart move coming back to New York. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, LA people. I'm only kidding. <laughs> and Al uh, found out that I sang, and he's like, oh, you know what? I get invited to all these charity events. You know, why don't you come with me? And I, at that point, I hadn't sung in front of people in so long, uh, I was actually terrified to do it. Sure. I was like, oh, no, no, I can't actually sing in front of people. <laughs> you know, but he just kept dragging me, uh, and we'd sing a song here, a song there, Beautiful. and it's now grown into this full show. And um, interestingly enough, at a certain point, I, I, I kind of had this realization, and I had it with the writing, too, because I started writing plays all very late. I mean, I started both these That's two, two right. new careers, <laughs> yes. basically at the age of 50. And, um, uh, but part of it was like this idea that I, I have nothing to lose. That's right. I have nothing. I don't have anything to prove to anybody because nobody expects me to be able to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of crazy that I'm starting these two what whole new careers, right? <laughs> so all the pressure just lifted because Beautiful. I was like, "No, oh, there's, uh, you know, it, it, no one will know the difference if I fail." <laughs> so, so I just went for it. You took this leap of faith. I just took this leap of faith, Good for you. and it's just grown and grown. And now, um, you know, we're, we're going to be doing a big uh, venue in Vegas. And Wonderful. we've got this woman representing us who wants to like book us everywhere, and Fantastic. it's just it's just snowballed into Good this you, full Deborah. show. And it's, it's so great. true. Time and time again, I love hearing when people didn't let fear get in their way, greatness then approached them. Huh. Versus everybody worrying about, like you said, I, what did I have to lose? Nothing. Just let me just go and do that. What a yeah. great attitude. What a lesson you're sharing with everybody. Yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. And, and it, you were it, so it, kind to say it even happened at an age of my life where here I am opening up another fourth, fifth door from cool. all your different cool. careers. Cool. And we named about 12 of them so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that that's maybe part of the reason why people like our show. Sure. I mean, I think it's joyful and we, you know, we oh, talk about the doubt. power of the music, how important it is in our lives and how good it is for us and everything. But I do think that people look at us and they realize we're not, we're not 20 years old, you know. <laughs> no, nah, come on. You know, and they're like, look what those two are doing up there. It's they're inspiring. Like, they're like living their dream, you know, and it kind of makes you think, well, they can do it. Maybe I can exactly. do it, right? Exactly. Why well, not? that plus the two of you do it so beautifully. I mean, oh, thank you. listening to the two of you earlier, and it was like, wow, this is in a lousy microphone, a horrible sound system. Oh, my God. <laughs> One I'm little like, speaker. We're sharing and the honestly, mic. Honestly, <laughs> and, and I'm all the way about 150 feet away doing my own thing. Right. But as I'm listening to it, I'm like, this sounds like it's coming from a stereo. I mean, you were actually just superseding the electronics, the wow. way you two were projecting your voices. Wow. And it was just beautiful. It was well, just so it, beautiful. It comes from the heart. It, you, know? I, you could hear that. We really just started doing this loved. because we loved it. Yes. Like, That's what singing I was saying. gives us joy to sing together. And then we realized that other people listening to us, it gave them joy. So like, that's what it's all, that's what it's all it's about. truly what it's all about. Yeah. And music is not just joy. You're giving people more inspiration, like you said a moment ago, to say, this music is giving me life. I should go yeah. follow what I really want to go do. And yeah. Your voices absolutely did that. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. Something else about music, I'm going to tell Please. you this, because I talk about this in my show. So my stepfather was an amateur opera singer. 
And he could have been a professional. He was actually asked, asked by the New York, New York Metropolitan Opera. Wow. But he was a young man, and he also loved boats, and he wanted to move to California. And so, you know, he... It goes that California thing yeah, again. Yeah, he, he turned it down. <laughs> but um, he passed away of Alzheimer's a few years ago, and Alzheimer's is, I'm sure, you know, yeah, it's just horrible. horrible, horrible. And it just robs you of all of your mental and physical um, capacity. But what we retain is our link to music. Yes. This is so interesting because they've done a lot of studies about this, the healing power of music for Alzheimer's patients. So, uh, and, and because he loved music so much and he was a singer, this was remarkable. Like literally months after he could do nothing for himself, he could break into an aria wow. and sing it flawlessly. Unbelievable. Perfectly. And the staff were like astounded that he could do this, you know? And um, anyway, so I just wanted to say that because uh, it was so, so, so powerful to, 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 to find sure. that out, you and know, and that connect. That. And they discovered that, that that connection is the last thing we lose as human beings, is our connection to music. That's how powerful wow. music is to us. You know, we all know we have a left and right brain. One's logical, mathematical, the other one is creative, yeah. which is the music. And, and what I've also read as we were talking about wellness is if people who are only the one, the right side, because not everybody's musical or has a creative end, it's encouraged, and I encourage people all the time. I'm a lousy musician, but I still play my sax whenever I can, and I don't care what it sounds like. I just care that I'm trying right. for the purpose because the canals between the left and right side collapse that's right. when they don't get a chance to challenge each other. That's right. That's and right. that's where Alzheimer's, they've proven Alzheimer's and dementia, is the, that's the number one cause is when we don't try to use the opposite side. So I also encourage people, if you're righty, Try to do everything you can with your left hand. Oh, that's and smart. vice versa. If you're yeah. lefty, yeah, do, yeah, it, yeah. do it the other way. Because you're creating those new synapses yes. there. Yes, and I actually the right and the left. was yeah. at when I was playing basketball. I was actually equally as good left-handed as right-handed shooting mm -hmm. a basketball. And I used, and people you say, how did you learn? I said, just practice it. But you'll find other things, and then other things came so natural. Lefty, mm -hmm. I had to remind myself to use the right hand. <laughs> <laughs> But you bring up a great point about your dad because it was so important for us to know and encourage people how important it is to keep that mind going. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And don't wait until we get to that point. Exactly. And that's the problem. Is too many people say, I'm getting older. I don't have to do right. anything. Look at you. You and say, at 50, I'm going to start eight more careers. And that's, <laughs> and that's the point. And you can. You can, and literally Absolutely. there's no pressure on you. Zero. You know, you're doing it for yourself. That's right. No one, no one's going to care. That's no right. one's going to criticize you. And who bets more than love yourself? You love right? Exactly. It makes you happy. It brings you joy. You know, and that's, that's, you know, that's what I realized with the singing or even with, like, I started writing plays and I've got a play that we're Another. Now, we're, <laughs> now we're, you know, we're developing for Off-Broadway. Good for you. But it was the same thing. It was like, look, if I fail, I'm no worse off than I am. If That's I right. Ever started. What a wonderful you know, message. right? Thank you. Yeah, You're absolutely. Welcome. Where can we find you? Where can, I know you got a show going on. Oh yeah, we have a show uh, November second at the yep. Cutting Room, uh, November twenty third at the venue in Boca. And how do people find you? Because this is taped, and I'm not sure how it's going to line up with the calendar. Yeah, with. But how do people find you? On Facebook. Facebook. Facebook right. is good. Yeah. Okay. Is yeah. is it a Deborah Renard. Deborah Renard. Facebook yeah. page itself, right? They yeah. can go there and like yeah. you and get it, yeah, to know more just, about yeah, what's going on. Yeah, just me. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this has been so wonderful. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Deborah Renard, thank you everybody for looking at No Excuses and my very special guest and what a message she shared with us. We'll see you again. Thank you. There's no cue cards. <laughs> well, I don't know. I thought you were wonderful. Oh, thank you. <laughs>